Hello and welcome to Silver Wheel Tarot. Today I wanted to do something a little bit different and I'm going to show you all uh, some decks that I have. A little bit of a backstory first is that something has changed within my YouTube channel which has motivated me to uh, kind of go through all of my decks. And what that is, is that I believe that YouTube has shadow banned my channel, which is a little ridiculous because I have less than 1,500 subscribers and I don't use any words I don't think that are not allowed on YouTube. And for the most part, most of the decks that I use, or at least in the readings that I've done, have little to no nudity in the decks. But I have noticed that with my subscriber count staying the same, yet, um, say a month ago, my shorts would, like, it would be on average, I, I could get anywhere from 50 to 150 views. A really good video might have done, you know, 400. Now I'm getting 15 views on the regular for like the last month, maybe 30 if it's a really good day. And I don't think that people have just dropped off. I think that my stuff is not getting pushed out by the, maybe the new AI algorithm doesn't like my channel, <laughs> I don't know. But it just got me to doing a little bit of soul searching and thinking about what I'm placing on my channel. Um, the algorithm's gonna do what it does whatever. I do trust in the universe that if somebody needs to hear a message that I'm giving that they are going to get the message. Um, in YouTube, it's I have done this as a journey to be very empowering for myself because uh, I wanted to do it, right? I'm not doing YouTube per se for the money. It would be great if I made some money on here. I am doing other things as well. As you all know, I recently quit my full-time job a couple months ago to pursue being a full-time professional tarot reader and as well as creative, um, putting some things on my Etsy store. So I have other things that I've been pursuing, but for example, like my YouTube channel, in the first six months of being monetized, it took me six months to get my first $100 check. So, you know, I'm not doing this to make money, but it would be great if it did. I'm doing it because I'm passionate about it. But it's disturbing to me that all of a sudden, I could have such a huge cutoff from my channel. It just, it's unreal to me. And I've also had zero subscribers in the last 28 days. Zero. Like, not even, like, I've had some and then old ones have fallen off so it doesn't, like, add to the account. Literally, it says I've had zero subscribers, which has never happened in my entire, like, three years I've been on YouTube. So it's just really odd. So I think that YouTube has shadow banned me. So that was the, the motivation behind me just personally taking a look at what decks am I using. Um, I did do a couple of shorts that used the traditional Rider Waite Smith that had a little bit of nudity on them, though they were properly uh, monetized for limited monetization. The only thing I could think of is that some of my decks cards had nudity on them. Not an issue for me personally. I don't mind. I have a lot of decks that have nudity in them and it's not an issue but as i was doing some soul searching and decided to dig through my decks i wanted to identify all my decks that literally have no nudity on them because on this channel while it's, it's not a big deal for me um it's important to me that my content can be viewed by most viewers um, everyone from any type of spiritual background religious background, if they are okay with watching tarot, I would like them to be comfortable watching my channel. And while some people might say, well, be true to yourself. If you don't mind nudity, show the nudity. Well, that's fine and good, except that 
I am still being true to myself in that I'm very considerate about what other people think and feel. And while I'm doing this to be very empowering for myself and to gain the experience and the knowledge and the wisdom from having such a channel, um, I am also doing this to, to hopefully benefit and help others. Hopefully somebody is getting something from my videos. My biggest hope is that anytime I put out a tarot reading that there is at least one person out there that it is helped in some way. So I've made the decision to go through all of my decks, tarot decks and oracle decks, but today we're just doing tarot. And I've identified all the decks that have zero nudity in them. Okay, I was actually quite disappointed to find out some of the decks that I really love and use all the time have at least one card that has nudity in them and it just hasn't shown up in the readings. Those cards just haven't happened to show up in the readings that I do because 99.9% .9 of what I put on YouTube doesn't have nudity anyways. Okay, so with that said, these, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve decks. That's it out of all of my decks. There might be a little risque, like I think in the B tarot, there is a full frontal, but it's blurred out, so essentially nothing is showing. Um, there were a couple decks I pulled out that were risque, but I felt they were way too risque to have in this category because they, um, they were like pictures, right? So these are the ones that I was very comfortable and confident in saying that there is no nudity in them. So if that interests anybody, I don't know, but I just thought I'd make a video on it. If you guys like the video, please like, share, and subscribe, or hit that thumbs up so that I know that people are actually seeing my videos. Okay. Um, let's start with this one. So the first deck we have, and I'm not going to go through every card in the deck, but I'm going to go ahead and just show you guys the deck and do a quick uh, flip through of a handful of the cards in the deck. So this is a beautiful deck that I have, Midnight Magic, a tarot deck of mushrooms. So of course it wouldn't have new in it because it's mushrooms, but you know, um, it counts. Um, and it's a beautiful deck. Now, I honestly don't read with this deck too much um, because um, I'm really, I, when I initially learned, started learning tarot many years ago, um, I read very intuitively for a long time until I then started learning all the traditional symbolism. I mean, I would say that I learned, I'll talk while I'm flipping through some of these. Um, I learned very much intuitive off of the imagery, tapping into my in intuition. Then I learned a few keywords off the cards, and then I started digging into the the astrology and the numerology and the the elements and the um, all that good stuff. So this is a very gorgeous deck, but it it doesn't have any. As much of the traditional symbolism a lot of it is in the imagery if you were to hold it side by side with the cards but um, but if you're not really familiar with the traditional cards from the, say the Rider Waite Smith deck then you may not be able to see it in the imagery with the mushrooms and the animals and the critters that are in the deck um, so it's a very beautiful deck but I find it also because it's just plants um, I have a really hard time, and specifically just different kinds of mushrooms while it's gorgeous. Um, it's a little uh, more challenging for me to read intuitively. I definitely can, but I don't want to be, say, doing a reading on YouTube where I put the cards down and I have to stare at it for 15 minutes to go, oh, that's what the message is right? Nobody wants to sit around and wait 15 minutes for me to get the message. Um, you know, but I am going to start trying to use it more now that I am much more um, in the knowing of the traditional uh, symbolism and correspondences of the cards. So just by knowing, oh, it's a two of wands, 
like I have that to lean on now. So that knowledge, other than just going off of the symbolism. So I may start using that deck a bit more, especially since if I do try for at least a little while to use decks that, uh, you know, don't have any nudity in them, then I've got a limited number of decks. I mean, would you even believe I have the Light Seers Tarot, Druidcraft? Um, I mean, really, a lot of the popular decks. Um, okay, let's go ahead and do this one. I forgot what company, what the name is of the company and got this off of Etsy, but I love this bag. Um, she happened to have this one that looks like dragon scales and it's a dragon deck, so I couldn't resist. This was a ways back, but love the bag. Absolutely. Okay, so this deck I actually just used in a reading. I have the book here. Is a guide to the Celtic Dragon Tarot. It's a gorgeous deck. It's a little challenging to read sometimes too, only because the swords are fire and the wands are air, but I but a lot of the symbolism on the card is kind of the same as the Rider Waite Smith, so I tend to end up reading into the cards um, intuitively. It's like the swords or the wands. The energy in the cards shows up as both to me, not like the opposite. It it shows up with both energies. It's kind of weird. Um, great readings off this deck. Beautiful deck, but that's why you don't see it a lot. Um, and kind of a backstory when I first started, um, before I even started learning tarot, when I started, uh, you know, doing witchcraft, the first thing that came to me was um, initially I saw swords as fire and wands as air until I was looking up information and it, they're like, oh, it's the other way around. So I kind of had to un learn that in a way and then with the most tarot symbolism you know and so in some ways I look at them as both but I've really kind of adopted the the very common traditional wands as fire and swords as air so it kind of this deck sometimes throws me off a little bit with that but it's a beautiful deck I absolutely love it okay so neither of these decks I really don't use them very often So another great deck that you will probably see more of is the Tarot of Mystical Moments, just because it's a gorgeous deck. It's very easy to read intuitively, as well as um, it fits the category we have here today. Okay, so just flip through some of these cards. I mean, look how beautiful the images are on these cards. The symbolism in them is great as well, too, with the images. If you like this type of artwork and you're very intuitive and um, read the symbolism, your guides work with you that way a lot with the symbolism. See, like this would be a risque card. It's kind of a side angle, but it doesn't really show anything. So there's a couple of like that in here. Um, that's beautiful. But like I said, I mean, it really is important to me um for people to feel comfortable watching the channel based on the decks that I'm using now if they just don't like my comment my content then that's fine I'm not for everybody that my content's not going to be for everybody um I try to mix things up from time to time so you know some people may come and go depending on what I'm showing like there's another risque kind of but it's not showing anything so at most that's what you'll see in these decks so this is a very gorgeous deck i love the amount of colors in this deck as well it's beautiful Alrighty, this one's a teeny tiny deck i don't use it honestly because um only recently in the last year have i had to get reading glasses <laughs> And I'm not used to wearing them. I have them on today because I knew I was going to use this deck. But um, I still don't use my reading glasses all the time. Probably when I even should because I'm just not used to it. 
but I'll try and hold these up closer. But these are so tiny, I literally, can't, without my reading glasses on, I can't really see the images, um, the fine details, and I can't read the words. So um, these tiny decks are great, but just can't go there. I think I actually have one more deck I didn't pull in here. This is the Everyday Witch Tarot. I think I have the Cat Tarot also. It's also, I think, another Deborah Blake deck that's tiny like this, but I think it's in my purse. Oops. I really ought to get the larger version of this deck because this is a cute little deck. I really like it. It's just these cards, these mini cards. They're not just like small, they're, they are tiny. All right, so there's that deck. That is the Everyday Witch Tarot. Hey, if anybody knows of a, um, as true to form as possible, Rider Waite Smith version, a deck that is a version that doesn't actually have nudity in it, I would love to know what deck that is. Um, because it's, you know, it's kind of sad. I mean, in a way that something like that is going to keep me from using some decks. But, um, you know, like I said, I want everybody to be able to watch my channel. Um, and also, if that is the reason why YouTube has stopped showing my stuff to people, then, you know, it's an easy fix. It just limits what decks I'm using also. So... Okay, so this is the Haunted House um, deck. I actually got this one as a gift, and I'm really grateful that I did because I probably would not have picked it up myself based on the images on the box, but I absolutely love this deck. It reads wonderfully. I typically pull it out around um, fall, autumn, um, and closer to um, Samhain and Halloween, but, um, it is a gorgeous deck and it reads great. And probably not surprisingly, it's a really great deck for shadow work. Haunted house, you know, if you, uh, look at your shadows as haunting you in a way, <laughs> um, it reads really well for that, but I've read it in lots of different ways. That is one of my favorite um, strength cards. That's beautiful. Queen of Cups. King of Pentacles. I mean, just, it's a great deck. I love the skeleton as the hanged man. Upside down. That as the magician is great. Yeah, that's a great deck. I love this, love this one. And we're almost there. I am in the Northern Hemisphere, so it is still pretty hot here. We're still in the uh, low hundreds, between 90 to 106, somewhere in there on the average day. Um, but pretty soon it will be autumn and I can pull that deck out. We have the Wild Unknown Tarot, another one of my faves. I think with this deck though, they this is one of those decks that switches a couple of the major arcana cards around, um, but I still haven't had any issues reading with it because of that. But um, again, this, is, this one's just got a lot of animal symbolism on it, but it reads very well intuitively for how simple some of the pictures are. Really quite surprising. Love that temperance. I mean, that card is so gruesome looking, but I still love it. Beautiful deck. It's 
got a really nice balance to it with these couple of cards in it that are a little gruesome, but not really. You know, the, the symbolism is nice. Let me know if you guys would be interested. I am going to be going through all my oracle cards as well, but I have quite a bit more oracle cards actually than tarot decks, maybe twice as many. So it's going to take me a bit to go through it. Um, let me know if you're interested. I just, this was on my mind today and this is what I was doing and it was on my heart to maybe, you know, share these with everyone and kind of let, let you guys know the situation. I think this card's in there. Yeah. Okay. So backstory on this deck. I think I inadvertently ordered a deck that is a knockoff, which really is a bummer to me because I am really anti-knockoffs. I really try to buy from the, um, the artists, the creators of the deck, um, or from the publisher or stores, you know, selling legitimate decks. But the box is really flimsy, which is key number one. It's possible the creators used a box like this. I mean, it's pretty nice looking, but it's a flimsy little box. But I think I've seen them on Etsy, but I didn't buy it through Etsy. So I don't know if the official sellers who have, I think it's an Etsy store, if it comes in the same box or not. If anybody knows, let me know. But the cards themselves, when I first got them, they smelled so bad from the printing and the ink on them like I can feel it like this one of the reasons I don't use this deck very often it's gorgeous imagery but it's like somebody printed it on a printer a really nice printer but it's that ink on it and you can feel it it's so the cards just they don't they don't feel great in your hands so that is why I don't it like almost makes me feel dirty, you know, and then I just makes me remember the smell of them, but gorgeous deck. I will probably use it a few times as we get closer haunted cat tarot towards, you know, that time of year with Halloween and such. Gorgeous, gorgeous deck though. And it always takes me a bit to go back um, and look and figure out there's the different suits. So you have staves, that's obvious, but they have uh, moons, chalices is obvious. Um, what's the other one? Moons, staves, chalices. How come I'm not coming across the others? Tombs. Um, so I think it would be obvious that at first I was like, oh, moon would be water, intuition, whatever, but cups, you have cups. So between tombs and moon, I always have to, to kind of look through it and, and figure out. I think there is, when you research the deck online, I think is how I came across the Etsy store. Um, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, if, but I think it was an Etsy store, um, where I actually found a description of the suits. Again, why I think, I mean, nothing like that came in the box. So again, why I think this might be a knockoff. Um, but it's a gorgeous, gorgeous deck. So cute. I love the artwork. All right. Now into the decks that have a little bit bigger box. These are kind of the decks I've been using um, a lot recently. Anyways, but we have the B Tarot. This is a newer deck to me. Um, love the, the card stock on these. But I'll go ahead and flip through some of these. The B Tarot. It seems to be a favorite to people who watch my channel. So 
this very modern but very gorgeous so again here's one that's risque right like shows it from the back <laughs> a little bit of the buttocks but really nothing not really showing anything and the star card too right but it's not not really showing anything I was really surprised honestly truly how many decks had nudity in it and this was the most but it's got the bees and it's it's covering it's not it's not showing anything so um but it's a gorgeous gorgeous deck okay so that is the bee tarot and if you know of any other decks that you love that don't have nudity in them put those down in the comment too i would love love to know because like i said i mean regardless if that's why why i'm my youtube channel seems to have dropped off the end of the earth um i really want to use decks on this channel where everyone is comfortable with it it would be different if i was doing you know eventually a, um, I'm going to be doing one-on-one -on -one readings. I'm not at this time, but I will be. Um, you know, it would be different if I can give someone the option of the decks, but on the YouTube channel, I can't. So for the purposes of the channel, um, I'd love to know if you guys know of other decks out there. This is the Tarot of Dragons, another newer deck for me, and I absolutely love it. It reads fantastic. Um, I like this style of artwork. The symbolism in the cards is great. One of my favorite cards. So this is the universe, but it's the world card. It's the dragon's eye. I love that. It's got like the universe in the eye. Gives me the chills. Reminds me also of the death card in the um, Lightseer's Tarot, which I'm really bummed. I think in the Lightseer's Tarot, I think it is the Empress card. Um, one card out of that whole deck. Great deck. Love using it. It's very popular. But, again, it's got that one card in it. And where it doesn't bother me, it seems to bother YouTube, and I'd like to gear my channel towards a wider audience. Um, I respect people of all backgrounds, beliefs, and so not, you know, the nudity in the imagery just isn't for everybody. So I'm moving away from that, at least with what I'm using on the YouTube channel. Beautiful deck. Another cool, unique death card. The skeletons. Okay. Three more decks. Let's go ahead and hit this one. We have the Trick or Treat Tarot. This one I got last year. <laughs> it's really cute. I mean... For, for Halloween theme, it's it's great. Okay. But again, like some of these decks are just decks that I wouldn't use year round. Um, the cat one, the mushroom ones, those aren't, aren't really easy to read with. So I'm kind of limited right now with the decks I have. I mean, you only need one deck, truly. Anyone out there, I know it's easy to see everybody has a million decks these days. You really only need one. Even if you want to do a YouTube channel, you only need one deck. But I enjoy the artwork. I enjoy the different symbolism. Each deck, because of the symbolism, I think this is like the most risque in the deck, but it's fine. It's really not showing anything. Um, each deck speaks differently, the symbolism in it, because the images are different. So the cards might represent the same thing, but with you just get a much bigger variety with different decks. So it's nice to have multiple decks to pull from. And even if all you have, seriously, if you wanna start a YouTube channel and all you have is the Trick or Treat Tarot, like use it all year round, so what? You know, it's a great deck. Be a rebel and use it every month except for October. <laughs> oh, 
All right, we have the Wizards Tarot, another great deck. I really should be using this one a little bit more often because I really love it. I love the dragon. Yeah, clearly I like dragons, so I like the dragon on the back there. These are a little glossy, so hopefully I'm giving it the right angle for the camera. beautiful strength card. You know, I think all readers are a little bit different, but a lot of readers do have specific cards they like to look at in the deck. Um, I like to look at the strength card. I like to look at the death card. Um, the magician card is one that I really like to look at in the deck. And I don't know that I would say if I didn't like the image on that one card that it would keep me from having a deck but um it would be kind of a bummer i actually really love this queen of wands beautiful uh queen of wands card so powerful yet you can feel the femininity in it great nine of cups too And I thought this was a unique uh, Four of Wands. Interesting. Seven of Pentacles, Five of Cups. Beautiful deck. All right, one more. So I have the Book of Shadows Tarot. This is not one that I use very often. And honestly, as I went through it, one of the decks has some nudity in it and one doesn't. So... Um, it is the As Above, the universe-themed deck that has some nudity in it. So I just kind of marked it in there so I wouldn't forget because I'm keeping it, they're both in one box. So keeping it together. But the uh, So Below deck, the Every Day-to-Day -day Life-themed deck, um, doesn't, which I'm, I'm glad because this is the one that I actually use more of in this deck. So... We happen to have a Halloween theme card right there on top. I love the variety of the different like day-to-day -day life themes. Uh, they got very creative in this deck. It covers a lot of different scenarios that most people can relate to from day-to-day -day life. Um, it's really a great deck for that. I should be using this one more as well. The artwork is not my favorite, but the symbolism is great. It reads great. Um, I will probably end up using it more now just because I have less decks that um, I'm willing to use on this channel anyways. I might consider another channel where I would use any deck but honestly probably not just because it takes a lot of work and time and effort and I just don't have the time to commit to a yet another YouTube channel. I know some people do it. Kudos to them. I think that's fantastic. Um, and I don't know honestly how some of these creators do it because it's a lot of work. If you are literally doing the channel by yourself, it's a lot of work and time. And, and I do it in a way where I don't actually edit my videos. I use it as an opportunity to try and just not goof up next time and to also kind of face my shadows with that regard. Um, you know, like I said, this YouTube channel is um, a way of empowering empowerment for me because um, when it first crossed my mind to start a channel, it was like, yes, let's do this. But then, you know, doubts creep in and your shadows pop up and I'm like, nope, nope. I'm going with my initial gut instinct. And it has been such an amazing, um, journey so far. But, um, there you have it. That is the last one I have for today. So, 
kind of a little bit different than what I've been doing for a while. Not a reading, but I'd be curious to know if you guys enjoyed that. And if you would or would not like to see the um, Oracle decks that I have weeded out as well, because you'd be surprised how many Oracle decks also, if it's not something that you're paying attention to because you don't mind, it can be quite surprising when you start going through your decks. You're like, oh my gosh, like most of my decks have nudity in them. Um, and you might not think twice about it, but you know, I clearly didn't, but this whole thing just kind of made me think about it and go through it and make me realize after doing some soul searching that, you know, I really want this channel to be one that, um, you know, anybody can watch, that anyone feels comfortable watching. So that's where I'm going with it. Let me know what you think. Until next time, be blessed.